Okay, working capital is done. The next step is to calculate depreciation. And this is a simplified depreciation schedule where we're simply taking a percent of the opening balance. There are all sorts of more complex ways to calculate depreciation with detailed schedules broken down by assets, etc. And that's perfectly fine, but for the purposes of an M&A model, depreciation is not a major focus in calculation. So we're using a simplified assumption so that we can focus on the ins and outs of M&A transactions. What is important to understand here is that we take the closing balance from the pro forma balance sheet, where we've combined the PP and E from the two businesses we've done, our fair value adjustments, etc. So we've got that as the stub period closing balance. The next period opening balance is going to be equal to that. This is a corkscrew calculation that pulls the numbers forward. Then we add CapEx. So what I want to mention here is that CapEx is assumed to be driven by each of the operating companies. We assume that each of them will operate somewhat autonomously, and therefore we take the forecast from each of those companies and we link them in. So what that means is we're going to set this to be equal to, and I'm going to open a bracket here, the acquirer CapEx assumption, which if we scroll into the model, we can find right here, plus the target CapEx assumption, which if we scroll down to the same row, is linked right here. And we multiply both of those by the percentage of a year that we're dealing with here, which is a quarter of the year. Depreciation is going to be equal to the opening balance multiplied by the depreciation rate assumption, which is a 20% declining balance, multiplied by the year fraction. The closing PP&E is equal to the opening amount plus capex that was added minus any depreciation that lowers the value. We can then select all of this and fill it right. So now what we've got is our closing PP&E number that we need for the balance sheet, as well as our depreciation number that we need for the income statement. So let's see how that started to fill in here. All of a sudden, DNA is filled in on the income statement, and we have our closing PP&E balance on the balance sheet.